Hey everybody, Tony D with a hot take uh, about a weird article that I had to weigh in on. Tim Pool, I think, called it up. It's an article in the Atlantic, link archived in the description, uh, about that Trump is unmanly, the most unmanly president ever. It's such a weird take, right? I mean, look, there's a lot of things you could say about Trump. You could say he's obnoxious. You could say he's a jerk. You could say he has bad policy. He's a terrible president. Whatever you want to say about him, I don't think you can realistically call the man unmanly. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is a guy who's banged beautiful women all over the world. He's had beautiful wives and lots of kids. He's very alpha in his whole attitude as a bully boy. Yes, you can argue that that's not right, and that, that he's a jerk, but you can't argue that that's not alpha behavior. Alphas do that. They, they boss people around. They tend to be bosses. And most of our presidents, you know, Clinton was another one, right? Um, uh, almost every president, JFK certainly was. Uh, you know, they're pretty manly guys. They're ambitious. They, they move up the ladder. Um, I don't know if Obama is. He seemed a, a little bit softer. I don't think Jimmy Carter was. He was more of a kind of a fill-in guy. Um, but, you know, they're still, they're still guys, and they're still fairly manly. I mean, what do you expect? I mean, obviously this writer, I, I think it's just clickbait. That's all it is. As everything collapses into the internet, and that's what's happening in terms of media and entertainment, it's all collapsing into the internet because it's so much easier to deliver entertainment, news, whatever, through the internet. It just is. I mean, I'm greatly enjoying Amazon books. You know, I'm able to write a book, and within, you know, a few hours of being finished editing, I can... You know, if I have a cover, even if I don't have a cover, Amazon has faux covers you can make up yourself. Uh, fortunately, I'm in the comic book business, so I have access to really good artists. But uh, you can, you know, make one or whatever, and within a matter of a day or two, your book is up. People are reading it. They can see it. It can be paid for. You're getting the money. Uh, you can uh, uh, then... With a few hours more work, you can make a print version, which you can then order from Amazon at a really good rate. Like my book, The Pineys, they retail for $7.99 because of the length. It's all done down to the page. So, you know, uh, Amazon has a chart, tells you where to put the price point and what's the best one for you. Uh, and, and how to get the most royalties. If you're exclusive with Amazon, you get the most royalties. Boom, you click it, set the price point, and that's it. I mean, and I can get the books printed to me for about $2.30, which is a great price where I can order literally any amount. I don't have to order thousands of books anymore like I used to in the old days. And that's an amazing price. So... How am I going to go back to before the internet? Uh, it's just not going to happen. The before time is done. You know, how are we going to go back to watching TV like we used to? You know, I remember the days where it was just basically three network channels and then you had three local channels and PBS. And... Nobody had a VCR, so if you missed a show, you had to wait for a rerun to come on, or you never saw it again. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, now, oh my God, you can watch a show from like 10 years ago, you can binge watch the whole thing, uh, you can watch half of it, you can watch the best of it, you can just watch the clips of one particular character, edit it all together. I mean... It's amazing. It's staggering the amount of choices you have in terms of just watching TV shows or movies. Um, and that doesn't even count like pirating movies and TV shows. There's a whole world of that as well. But with all this competition on the internet, the price of movies is still relatively cheap. You know? You can buy a movie for 20 bucks. 
And if you're watching with your family, that's a great deal. And if you got it for two days, you, you, you invite some friends over, I mean, you're talking that's nothing. It's nothing. And you get the convenience of watching it in your house. So, the reason all these terrible articles, I think, are going on the internet is because they are desperate, just like any website, to attract readers. Desperate. Because how are you going to attract a reader to uh, ostensibly, uh, uh, ostensibly an, a, a, a stodgy publication, in my view, like The Atlantic, or it used to be. It used to be like a real news source. Only certain people read it. You know, it wasn't for everybody. Kids wouldn't read The Atlantic. Um, you know, your average schmo doesn't read The Atlantic. It was for people in the politics and a few other things that they covered. It was a little highbrow. Highbrow doesn't matter anymore. It's clicks. Clicks are lowbrow. It's low as you can get. People get clicks just for putting raunchy headlines up or crazy headlines. They do it on YouTube. They do it everywhere. And everything regarding that sort of dynamic has bled into all other media now. So now you're not just watching like a CNN or an MSNBC or a Nightly News or whatever. You're watching people put together stuff that they're hoping will be clipped and then put online and go viral. That's their hope now. Because that will get, they are hoping, will get the millions of views they need to then come back to the old media. And yes, TV is still effective to some degree. I mean, certainly local TV is. But, I mean, if you got something viral video, there's a viral video right now of a woman in an encounter with some guy and they get to an argument over leashing her dog. It's very stupid. Um, but it's going viral. And now there are people defending her and defending him and saying she's a Karen and saying that she's racist and blah, 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 blah. She's a former editor at Marvel Comics, by the way. I guess the wheel turned and somebody who's woke got their knees cut out from under them. How's it feel, wokeness? Um, but uh, I still don't condone that kind of behavior because... And it's just the internet. It's just some stupid video on the internet. It's just some encounter. You know, we have encounters every day with people that go kind of wrong. And I don't mean like any physical encounters. I just mean somebody's a jerk or somebody thinks they're a jerk or you're just in an annoyed situation. I was in a McDonald's once and I cut in front of a guy in line. It was pretty blatant, admittedly. But I was kind of like caught up in my own little world and I saw him, but I didn't want to see him. I just wanted to move up. And uh, eventually I said, ah, here, do you want to go up? And I had sort of invaded the space to the point where like now it was more trouble for me to pull back and give him the space than it was. And he just said, no, go. <laughs> so in that instance, I would have been a jerk. And if you had videotaped that and put that online and gone viral, I would have been jerk at McDonald's, right? So... Uh, you you, you got to be careful with this stuff. And uh, we're, we're, we're sinking everything to its lowest possible denominator. And that is uh, Fail Army, I guess you'd say. Which, by the way, I love Fail Army. <laughs> it's just videos of people hurting themselves and doing stupid things. But that can't be the news. Questioning Trump's masculinity is such a in my view, a transparent attempt to gain clicks over nothing. It's, it, it's such a nothing issue. Uh, it, it's just, oh, everybody will get mad. See, the Trump supporters will get mad that I question their president's masculinity, and the non-Trump supporters will go, yeah, this validates my opinion. I'm going to read it. So see, we both win. No, we all kind of lose because it, it continues to push the, the Atlantic down, down, down. It becomes just another thing on the internet. Just another guy getting kicked in the balls. Just another person who misjudged the door closing and gets smacked in the face. That's all it is. And uh, it's just another thing that people go click on and then they start reading it and go, oh, 
Is that what this is? Oh, okay. And, and now, and I talked about this before, you have people who do these videos like I do talking about this stuff, and it's become fuel for that. So some of this is now, hey, let's create the most outrageous article ever. So then people go to the site and maybe they'll read other site, other stuff too. Even though they're outraged about the one article, maybe they'll read other stuff. Uh, I am reminded about this recent Captain America story, right? So they made this Captain America story about how selfish he was and they put it on CBR, Comic Book Resources. It's already off the site, I believe. I went to the to go check on the uh, to find the link again, because for some reason I can't find I can't figure out how to find links in archive today. I figured out how to put them up, but then to find them without clicking on the original link, uh, that's confusing me. Um, I guess there's a way to do it. I haven't figured it out, but you know these people are, I think generating clicks and they don't even want the article to stay up because if there's too much hate for it, then they just take it down. It's like it never existed, right? So in a way, it's like this weird Orwellian memory hole. But instead of like changing reality, although they are changing reality slightly, it's like they're like pitching you bad realities, right? They're pitching you this bad reality where Captain America was actually a selfish character and part of the patriarchy or whatever. And you should not listen to him, blah, 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 in the world of comics. Only to like get people all geared up and go to the site to discover like, oh wait, it's gone. Oh, too many people must have complained about it. Oh, damn, I missed it. Well, it must be archived somewhere. I'm going to find it. You know, it's weird. It's like nobody wants to create like real stories that people would want to write. You know, uh, I mean, it is hard to do good news, right? I do good news with Tony and Joan. It's kind of hard to find the, 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 the sites. I mean, even in uplifting news on Reddit, people politicize that too. And they put up political things like, oh, isn't this uplifting news? No, it's politics. Stop putting that up there. But, um, you know, it's hard to find good news and it's hard to make that, oh, I really want to read about a grandma who needed uh, Afghans for the, her kids. Uh, that's not exciting. It's not as exciting as saying, hey, everything you believe, well, it's wrong. Men are pigs and they should all die or whatever. You know, whatever these... People say there was some feminist who said that in the UK or some something something like that, and it's like that's where we're at. We're at this part where it's all teas and no news. It, it's all icing and no cake. Nobody's gonna want to eat this anymore. Nobody's gonna want to go down that path anymore. Atlantic, get woke, go broke. So it's a real thing. It's happening to you. Stop doing this. Uh, the next time one of your minions comes to you and says, Oh, I want to do an article about how uh, Melania Trump is a terrible example to young women today. Say no. Say no, that's not news. Say no, that's not very insightful. Say don't you have anything else? Don't you have anything better? Can't you make some calls and find out some real data that would expose something? Can't you find any positive news? Instead of this endless cycle of how are we going to get Trump today? How are we going to get him? Orange man bad. How? How do we tell people the orange man is bad? <laughs> Apparently, it's just by exploiting every conceivable angle that he's bad. What next? Trump's shoes. Are they shoes America wants? We don't think so. I mean, why not? You, you, you've exploited every other possible angle for the guy. I mean, over and over again. It's just nonstop criticism, day and night. Is it any wonder people hate the media? They do. The only people who 
who continue to believe the media are the people who feel that they're forced to now defend the media because it's under attack. It's not really. It's, it's being completely irresponsible. It's like having your friend uh, uh, just get too drunk and you refuse to just take them home. Instead, you let him stagger around and cause more trouble while you defend him. Well, he really wasn't causing that much trouble. Yes, I mean, it just happened again. MSNBC, a reporter's doing a report about wearing face masks. And as he's standing there reporting, no one's wearing face masks. I'm the only one. Swing the camera around, look around. A guy holding a, a, a smartphone and, and filming him says, your cameraman's not wearing a face mask. I mean, this is how contempt, how much contempt these people have for the news and for you. They don't care. And I'm positive, although this is my opinion, that the moment that camera went off, the reporter went, okay, let's get out of here. Because his cameraman wasn't wearing the mask. So they obviously didn't feel that they needed to wear the mask. The reporters at the White House press conferences only started wearing the mask like two weeks ago. Before, they were just showing up without the mask. For a while, they were sitting right next to each other. Oh, but they had to tell everybody to stay home and wear a mask and social distance. But they didn't do it until people complained. And we still have clip after clip of them. The press conference ends. You see them stand up, pull the mask right off. Right off it comes off. They're still in the room with a bunch of people. They still have to leave the room and pass by a bunch of people. But they tear off their mask because they know it's BS. Not that wearing a mask is BS, but in their view, in that moment, you know, everybody's been tested. Everybody, at, everybody who goes to the White House, I'm sure, has been tested like a million times. They know they don't have anything. And so... They're tearing it off. So why are they wearing the mask? Why not just leave it off? Because it's a show. It's an entertainment show. Trump, the evil man, the evil orange man, versus the noble, wonderful reporters who are trying to stop evil orange man. It's a cartoonish narrative. Stop it. Just stop it. Ask him real questions. Ask the press secretary real questions and when she challenges you and the new press secretary has been killing it by the way if you haven't seen any of the the clips uh she's challenged them several times openly to you know go back and check on some things that that uh, uh have been reported or that that are known but haven't really been reported these reporters don't want to do that they don't want to give the Trump administration even a tiny bit of credit, even though they may have something to say. They could go check on their facts and come back to them and say, hey, your facts are wrong, and here's why. But they don't do it. Why? I think it's partly because they're lazy. And they don't really want to do it. Number two, they're worried that if they do, and the Trump administration is right on any point, even one tiny point, they will have to say, well, you are right on that. And they can't be seen doing that because they've entered into this camp, this opposite camp, this support Joe Biden, stop the bad orange man, and they will not do anything because, you know, the truth doesn't matter. All that matters is their side. And that's why we continue to get these idiot, idiotic articles. Ugh. Well, I'll link the archived one in the description if you want to read it, but I couldn't even get through it. I, I think it's a waste of your time, uh, even just to read the damn thing. I think it's all just clickbait. So you have to look very carefully at your news again. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm pretty informed and mostly what I watch, I mean, I skim stuff off the internet like everybody else, but I also watch a lot of YouTubers. And those guys read this stuff. So I get their take and then take after take after take that I can kind of compare. And then sometimes I read the article. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I trust these guys.
because they're more trustworthy than the regular news. I wouldn't lie to you on purpose. Not on purpose. I might do it as a mistake. I'm kind of stupid sometimes, but for the most part, I'm a fairly smart guy, I guess. Ah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just reading stuff and regurgitating it to you, but I kind of think I got an opinion. I don't know. I, I just, I don't know where to get the news anymore. I don't know where is real news. Uh, you know, back in the day, it used to be the New York Times. Now, who knows? You just got to seek out the new ones, I think. I think the new ones are better. They tend to be better because they're trying, right? And they got that startup money and they have to try. And if they could get some good news stories early on, that could, you know, rocket them up. So I think Project Veritas and, and again, some of these right-wing outlets, they're new. They're trying. And they're not totally reliable, but they're doing news. The old guys... It's not news anymore. They're just hanging on to the shrinking market. Anyhow, I've rambled long enough. Go out there. Seek news.